Welcome to Butterflies of Wisdom, everyone. As you know, today's Thursday, so I typically bring Mel on on Thursday, but I think this is the first Thursday actually recorded episode we've done in a while due to crazy schedules. And so I am going to let Mel read this episode because today we're talking about sculpting a job for yourself in any industry, but particularly the education field and why I'm exactly leaving the education field and moving on to freelance journalism. And yes, I got a book deal as of yesterday, so I'm slowly but surely working on that. It's a small book deal. No, it's not with Penguin Random House, so don't get your hopes up on that. But it's a small book deal, and I think this book deal would help me get to the New York Times or get to Penguin. Penguin Random House in New York, we'll see. It's a baby step, but I'm going to try it. So I'm going to let Mel take it away and ask me questions that he wants to ask me based on Jay's topic. Well, hello, 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 everybody. How are you? Win, I hope you're doing well. Hope you're feeling like winning today. No pun intended, but it's going to be a great day. So, sculpting your job and why you're leaving your field. Well, I can tell you one thing. Career pathing has a lot to do with how, you're, how you evolve in your superpowers and skills over the years. And we all have that. And we all are passionate about bits and pieces of what we do throughout the years that we all wish. I'm certain at one point thinking, God, if I could have this, this killer job, this is what I would do, and this is how I would sculpt it. Okay? So mine as a coach started out 33 years ago as a personal trainer. Now I've evolved into a high-level wellness coach for people over 40 who want lasting results. And, you know, that encompasses everything. So for you, when when did you start seeing those bits and pieces, and when did you start gathering them to, in your mind and in your heart? You're thinking, okay, this is how my ideal job would be. Well, I, I lost my job in 2009. My boss was boss hell, basically. The boss I have now is very supportive of diversity, and as a matter of fact, they're finally picking up diversity and inclusion as of this year. All the independent, all the independent private schools are picking up diversity and inclusion. So after many, many years of me balking, balking and squawking at me, I am finally getting put on a committee, believe it or not, to include diversity and inclusion at Country Day. And I just found out about that last Friday that they are finally doing this movement to include diversity and inclusion. And diversity is not only for the handicapped, it's for the Latino population, it's for the not for wealthy families, it's for people on scholarships that are looking to go to private schools all across the country because, as you guys know, private schools are expensive, and Mel knows this because he's sending his two sons to a Catholic private school in Sacramento, California. So diversity is not only for the disabled, it's for everyone, and inclusion is for everyone. And for years, I've been trying to teach people about disability from a perspective of using cerebral palsy as your superpower. I interviewed someone yesterday, and one of the questions they asked me was, what are you using your disability for? Is it your superpower? And yes, I said yes. I said yes to this big-time podcast. I would shock these places that way, but I said yes to this big time podcaster, and that big time podcaster is Jeremy Slate, and what he's doing is a podcast called Create Your Own Life, and 
learning from influential influences on his podcast. And so I think diversity and inclusion is an excellent thing. I think we should learn more about it. So I'm teaching music this year, which I absolutely love, you guys. I didn't think I was going to fall back in to loving teaching again. But, yes, but I want to focus on, and my boss knows this, I want to focus on more diversity, inclusion, and equality for those who don't have luxury that I do, the house in Aspen, Colorado, the beautiful supportive team around me, including my family, including Mel, and writing eight books and doing all that good stuff. So I want to focus on more diversity and inclusion. And so that's why I'm sculpting a job for myself. Now, when I say sculpting a job for myself, you know me, I have a bowl and a china shop as you know. And so I kind of asked, I asked in a very nice way. I said, look, this is what I want to do. This is how I want to do it. Give me your idea. And so that's um, how this sculpting diversity and inclusion job started. You know, it's the, the, the diversity, the diverse world needs championing, right? And I applaud you for that. I mean, I'm, I come from a diverse background. I, first and foremost, I'm an American. I'm very proud to be an American. And secondary, I'm Filipino because I'm a, I immigrated here. And I absolutely am able to live the life I live because of the welcoming, uh, the welcoming theme that this, this great nation gives us. So for you to embrace that diversity and think to yourself, hey, I want to work with every culture. I want to work with, you know, disabled and non-disabled people and inspire them to be the best that they can be. I, I don't know if there's any more stronger or noble kind of inspiration besides that. So thank you for that. Um, can you kind of pinpoint to us what are some of the things that you would like to uplift about people? What, what are some of the legacies you'd like to leave behind and have people focus on and improve, improve in themselves um, right now, if, if there are any glaring topics or issues in the world that you think that you well, think you can attack. Sure. Yes, I'll um, extend on that now. And lately I've been asked by complete strangers, particularly on this podcast, how do you keep positive mindset? Because a lot of the disabled are negative dancers. I'm sorry, but they are. I'm sorry, but just they step there, they go over to me and grab Miss Wynn into it. And it's like negative, dancing, negative, dancing, negative, dancing. So my legacy is giving people hope. And if they have a dream, figure out a way to do that dream. And I had a dream in Kona, Kona, Hawaii and to do a journalism thing because I wanted to be standing on the outside interviewing Kona Ironman champions, quite frankly, and I was sitting on the inside at that point doing Kona Ironman, which is a great honor in itself, but I wanted to be standing in the crowd interviewing Kona Ironman champions. So I had this dream on a boat. A yellow bowl, but they still have a picture. And my teammate was pulling me underneath. My teammate was underneath the boat pulling me. And so when I saw the crowd of people standing there watching all this, watching all the races, including the big yellow boat, which was very uh, easily spotted, I thought, well, why not am I on the outside doing the Iron Man champion? So that's what drove me to then apply journalism school in March. So I held that dream since October of 2010. October of 2010. Wow. That's very vivid. And, and the thing about 
turning a dream into reality is that, you, you know, you conceptualize it in your mind. And then at some point, you've got to take that mental picture, and it has to be, it has to be fired off in your heart. You know, it has to be an inspiration that no matter how you're feeling, you're going to go after it no matter what. And then the action has to take place. You've got to schedule the action. You've got to follow through with it. Can you talk about that a little bit? Can you talk about the process of when you started looking at the dream, how you started scheduling it, what did you start to change in your life to make it a reality? Well, I um, I started writing books when I was 23, and I started this podcast in its various formats shortly after that because um, people started asking me, how, how do you do all this amazing stuff with a disability without going insane? And how do you stay so positive? And how do you do all this amazing stuff on top of controlling your cerebral palsy? Quite nicely, thank you very much. So I thought, well, after doing the Kona Iron Man, I thought, why am I not standing on the outside interviewing the fabulous Kona Iron Man triathlete? as I come off the fence line. And so I thought about it. I'm, uh, I didn't tell anyone this until March of 2017. I actually didn't tell my dad until the letter arrived um, that I got in the entire mailbox. He opened the mailbox, sees it to me, and he's like, what? What are you doing now? And I said, oh, by the way, I uh, applied for the Academy of Arts. He saw the application she goes through, but we didn't know until the beginning of April that I actually got in. And so he, he was very shocked and surprised. He doesn't know that going to story. And this day is actually the first time I've admitted on the Kona Ironman story. And so, yeah. And so, to get back to your original question, I want to leave people with a legacy and hope. And I'm sorry if I forgot your original question. No. No, no worries. No worries. It's, uh, you know, we all have a, a steps in our journey, and um, and they're all impactful. But, you know, I'm sure you can recall so, there are some moments in your journey where you think, God, this is just absolute hell. There's some moments in your journey where it's absolute glory, and then there's some moments in your journey where you just feel like you're kind of trucking along. I mean, I, I went, I'm, I'm going through one right now where, you know, after Army stroke, it made me really take a good long look of where I was at, what I've done, where am I going, you know, are, are the things that I'm investing in giving me a great uh, rate of return for the future and for right now, you know. So are you, where are you at with your with your current rate of return, are you doing things in your life right now that make you feel like, hey, everything I'm investing my time and energy in is actually mutually benefiting the world and myself? Are there any things in your life that you you feel, hey, you know what, I don't need to do that. Let me focus. Let me take that energy and spend it on this. What could you do to make yourself better at this point? Well, even even though I love teaching, I feel like you can – Step outside in the classroom and teach more so books. So, yes, I consider myself a full-time journalist and a full-time writer, and now after four years, I'm finally getting the professional training. Thank you, Academy of Arts in San Francisco. But I consider myself a full-time writer who teaches, who actually, quote, unquote, teaches diversity on the side, because as you guys know, um, $192 on the 15th of the month is not going anywhere towards a decent life. I know also that make it fix to get income, and I want that because I think you can teach diversity through a book more than you can to a bunch of Honestly, I do. 
Well, again, there, there you go. You're looking at your superpowers. You're looking at how can you make yourself impactful um, to a more targeted audience. And I know that you're passionate about teaching. And with kids, how can you not be, right? I mean, I coached baseball for kids for a long time from the ages of, oh, what, five all the way to 12. And I've always said, if you can coach and teach kids, you can coach and teach anybody. Because it absolutely makes yeah. you understand that it's not, a, it's not about you. You know, they, they're on their own. No. They're on their, they are on their own attention span. And you have to absolutely understand that. You know, and, and the gains yeah. are little by little, right? I mean, they're small. They're not, I mean, figuratively and literally speaking, they are small. But the improvements are, are tiny steps, and you can't expect more than that. And you have to be consistent yeah. in what you do. So now, if you took that patience and you took that targeted focus and you applied it to a literal, mature world of an audience that could actually grasp what you're saying, that's really going to make you blossom even more. That's even going to make you feel inspired more. Don't you think so? Yes. Yes. No, I agree with you. And my um, my team and my family are so supportive of me because – there's so um, many toothpick, and I quote, toothpick models in the modeling industry. I don't know very many journalists, and by the time next week's episode with Mel and I hit, we, I will have the research done. I just can't do it right now because I'm stuck doing a massive homework assignment that taking most of my time and so I will have the research done about how many journalists actually have disabilities because I don't think there's very many of us I don't think there um, is I know so matter of fact that there's not very many disabled podcasters out there and either they can't afford to do it or just choose not to. I know there's what? Um, well, the one I'm thinking of speaks on behalf of the disabled. I know there's one other di- truly disabled podcast called The Ability Podcast run by Jacob Holt, who has osteogenesis in the a.k.a. with a bone disease which means he can't walk because if he falls over, his bones are so brittle that he will break the bone and get sent to the hospital and, yeah, all that good stuff. So I don't think very many disabled, quote-unquote, people are journalists, and I don't think they're getting the training that they did. Therefore, the, the diversity in my niche means be higher, but people just choose not to do it because school is going back to school is mightily expensive, and running a podcast is small, expensive compared to going back to school. Very true, very true, uh, and also you know there's the whole whether you're disabled or not, the whole thought of going back to school to learn something new can somewhat feel daunting, you know, to some people. Um, really? <laughs> you know, yeah, I mean, seriously, you know, I mean, to, uh, I was, I'm a challenging student in that my attention spans all over the place, if you can believe that, <laughs> but but I'm more of an auditorial learner where I, I need to hear yes. things over and over and over and match with, match with the visuals. Yes. I can't just read a book or look at instructions once and go and follow it. I, I, can't, have to do it I cannot. You know I, mean? so, I cannot yeah. physically hold a book right. now. You know that. Right. I cannot right. physically hold a book. That's why I put all my work on audio um, tape. Right. And what I discovered yesterday by accident is doing artwork because it's, I haven't picked up a marker in about I would say I gave up that company and I gave up Aspen Bozard in 2009. So I haven't picked up a monkey since 2009. I haven't picked up a paintbrush since 2009. You know, this 
this fashion journalism is getting back to my hobby, which is all it wants to begin with. And do you right. know my tone and CT just had a field day placing yesterday on a piece with a marker and a tracing paper because I was trying to do this homework assignment. And do you know my tone decreased with a marker in my hand? Thank you very much. Mm. So well, my you know, it went away. <laughs> nice. Nice. And they've done studies on artwork and music and how that affects all disabilities and cerebral palsy and all all political research on that one, too. But um, fashion journalism and fashion journalism is my true calling. I think there are studies, I believe, where the physical act of a pen in your finger to paper sends particular messages either to your brain or to your body where, number one, it elicits the creative side, and number two, there's got to be some sort of calming effect with it, you know, because of, of the yeah. certain focus. Yeah. Maybe maybe that's what helps ease uh, spasmodic, you know, symptoms or whatever the case may be. And, you know, yeah. for, for sure, when, once you get into a groove, whether you're drawing or creating on, you know, pen to paper, whether it's a written word or artwork or just free flowing, even doodling, right? Think about it. When you're doodling, yeah. what does that do? It really yeah. takes it, – it's a real connection to it, right? There's a physical and emotional connection to it. And if anything, a mental distraction because you shut down all that mental chatter in your head because all you're doing is you're creating. You can, do a, you can do a doodle of circle after circle after circle after circle, either one on top of another or overlapping, yeah. like as, a, as an event diagram, and it would be very relaxing. You know, it would it would be very yeah. it would be very appealing to you. So, I can totally I can totally relate to that. You know, and it's uh, everybody has a different therapeutic mechanism. You know, so all right. Well, looking ahead, tell us what you're excited about. Tell us what you're looking forward to in your in your educational pursuits, and tell us something that you might be well. In my educational pursuits, I'm excited to walk in 2019, and personally get a big hug from Mel uh, in person <laughs> because I know he's going to be there. And so I'm excited to walk with my second degree. My first degree is in education, and my second degree will be in fashion journalism. So that's why I'm a little bit under rock and not communicating as much as I should with you guys because I'm really, really, really concentrating on my second degree because this is going to be my final degree. Uh, no more degrees after this. And so what I'm nervous about, honestly, is how the journalism field is going to accept me. Honestly, because I um, I'm not the most quiet mouth in the room. <laughs> And I'm certainly not the most, I, I walk with walk, walk in the X, or walk um, on a daily basis, walk with orthotics. And I sound funny due to my cerebral palsy. That's how I explain it to you. Kids, I sound funny with my speech, in it, speech impediment and my slight stutter, and which um, I'm Certainly, but certainly getting clear. So my biggest fear is how the journalism community is going to accept me once I become a professional journalist. You know, I, I got to enlighten you on something. First and foremost, there needs to be no acceptance at all. Number two, oh boy. at the end of the day, at the end of the day, it comes down to the value that you add to your audience on a regular basis without fear. Uh, as a person who has recorded more than 300 Facebook Live videos and recorded videos and have done countless um, topics, deep dives and whatnot, there are times when I think, oh, my God, this really sucks, and there are times when I think, oh, my God, that was brilliant. And conversely, the reaction is the other way. 
the things that I feel I didn't do well on are the most well-received by the audience, and the things I thought I was brilliant at are the least received. So as far as acceptance, I can tell you the best thing you can do for yourself is just without fear, be your brilliance and don't deny us of your brilliance. If, if there is one okay. person that you're going to impact, then it was worth it. You know, don't, don't, be, don't be afraid of that, my friend. You know, it's bull in a china shop, okay. hey, if anything. <laughs> I, they're not going to miss you for sure, right? They go, oh, here she comes, you know. Oh, wh- whatever way yeah. you want to look at it. It's pretty, I think it's pretty awesome, you know. Yeah. Super. Well, I, um, as, as you guys know, New, New, what did it say? So it's like New York Fashion Week is actually going on this week. So we're all excited about that in my class with and I've been um, seeing videos of New York Fashion Week and watching all the New York Fashion Weeks. And I hope to be um, a journalist at New York Fashion Week. I know the Academy of Arts has their own um, Fashion Week, which I – all the journalism students – I have to make this clear, but all the journalism students are supposedly invited to. So I might be traveling more than Mel would like. I'm so I might be uh, I might be traveling back and forth to New York and to um to San Francisco just for my work and that um we'll see what happens but I hope be a disabled journalist at New York Fashion Week one of these days. I have no doubt that you will. I think that's pretty awesome. I'd love to go with you this time, as a matter of fact. <laughs> well, so, yeah. But and in, you yeah, you know, I think I think it'd be a lot of fun. I, I totally love fashion. Are you kidding? Any chance to get dressed up? Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And then um, I we have another project, you guys, Wisdom of Style, which was originally Wisdom of Fashion, um, coming out May, if I can get my act together, it's reappearing May, not, May um, 22nd, 2018, which, two, 2019, sorry, not 2018, and so if, if Wynn can get her act together, that's reappearing in your podcast page, because that will be um, part of my portfolio, and so will this podcast, Butterflies of Wisdom. And I just applied to be a disabled journalist as of today. Someone wanted to give me that lead, so I'm really excited about that. And so, um, sculpting a job for myself, I just asked, and I told them flat out I'm going to stay in my job until I'm. 33 years old, and then become a full-time writer. That way I don't have to go out on my own, get the degree, eliminate eliminate so much stress, because if you're going back to school, you need the study paycheck. I've decided not to quit my job at the age of 30, because the study paycheck is helping me pay for school and helping me pay my loans and more importantly, more importantly, helping me pay for our supplies, which are a little expensive. Let's just put it that way. No student discount on our supplies. So that's what I've decided to do. And so, Mel, what's your last question for me? Hmm. You know, Whenever I look at something new that I'm going to do or if there's going to be a major shift that I'm going to make in my career or my life, I look at the things that are going to be the most fun. Because if it's not fun, why do it? So what would you consider are the funnest things that you're looking forward to learning and doing or just enjoying about this new this new pursuit you're doing? What what turns you on the most? Well, I'm, that just makes you smile. I am, even though I'm not going to be a fashion designer, I'm excited to look at sketches, and I'm excited to look at lookbooks and see if I, um, I'm excited to draw, which is one of the components of, 
I'm not excited to take notes. So I'm not excited to take notes. I'm excited for the autistic aspect of it because I have been artist all my life. I mean, I almost became an artist instead of going into education. My God, I almost started my, I developed my first company right on my back in a hospital bed, but I developed, I almost switched my career path back then in 2009 to um, go straight into art and the arts and journalism and fashion design, fashion design more primarily to help the disabled. And I, looking back on it, I wish I did that. And so I'm excited to see the autistic end of it because these up-and-coming designers are... um, on the leading edge. And here's a fact for you guys. Do you know that they now have a woman, Maria Plotty, leading the House of Dior? Do you know this is the first woman in history to lead the House of Dior? That's incredible. And the House of Dior and is so no, no small, that, small thing. Yeah. That's a yeah. major powerhouse. No small no small, no small powwow. So now I see a lot of um, women designers coming up. So that's why I um, am excited to see the design aspect of fashion journalism. Although I'm not excited to take notes, though, but I'll figure out the notes along the way. But I'm excited to see what these new up-and-coming women come up with. Because I'm all about women power, you guys. You know that. I'm all about diversity and women power. I'm willing to bet that these powerful women would absolutely love an opportunity to talk to you once they see that you're you're very passionate about fashion and the, and what your what your mission is for being a photojournalist yeah. and being a full time journalist. Yeah. So I see some great interviews coming ahead of in your, in your career for sure. Yeah. Oh, it's not far fetched. Thank you for that. That new that that yeah that that new head of House of Dior, you know, would absolutely, you know, refuse an opportunity to talk to you. For sure, absolutely. Well, no, it's not far fetched. And I was looking at it this morning as part of my homework assignment, and now I'm thinking this is a powerhouse that um, now I have to do with as a journalist, which made me laugh. Because I'm like, here we go. Here we go dealing with a powerhouse. And so we'll, um, we'll see what happens. And to leave you on this note, you never know who's listening to your podcast. So when do you guys start a podcast? You never know who's going to come out of the woodwork and listen to your podcast. And so just be careful of what you wish for on the podcast because I manifested things on the podcast with journalists on um, on this podcast who are in the fashion industry and this journalist still supports me and she has a podcast of her own and I manifested I said one day I'm going back to school for journalism and she goes you do it and she is behind the scenes, and she's still supporting me, and we talk on the occasion, and she is, so you never know who's listening to your podcast, and um, she has a wonderful podcast called The Spirit of Chipsoy, all about ethical fashion and up-and-coming ethical fashion designers, which I love. I'm using it as part of uh, um, my homework. And her name is Lauren Sanderson, and she was a um, fashion journalist in the San Francisco area for many, 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 many years. Finally moved back east and now is a freelance journalist and a podcaster 
and she was getting sick of doing interviews, not on the stuff she loves. So as Mel said, why not enjoy your work? Absolutely. You know, it's you're so right in that. You never know who's listening because there's always someone watching. There's always somebody listening. And even if they're just in the background and they don't really comment on, on anything or they don't they don't reach out to you, it doesn't mean that you don't have an audience, for sure. I mean, I I get that a lot, just about every day. Someone will ping me and, you know, someone, you know, I'll get my regular people that ping me on my posts and stuff. But every once in a while, someone will come forward and say, hey, you know, that's, that really meant a lot to me or that really resonated with me or or, or worse yet, I took a two-week break off from, from posting anything. I know you And did. after about a week, after about a week, people were coming out of the woodwork saying, where are you? <laughs> yeah. People I've never even yeah. heard of. Like, I know you know, you what did. happened to you? And I know you did. All this and yeah. Nothing happened to me. I'm still here. I'm just taking a mental break, and thank you for making me feel yeah. important. But, uh, you know, I'll be back soon. Your life yeah. will go on. Don't worry. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's why I'm uh, kind of not posting on Facebook right now, mainly right. because I'm so focused on this. Journalism right. great, but as soon as I get to second semester, you guys are going to hear a lot more from me. Second semester is next semester, so um, I'm lining up second semester as of Monday and Tuesday, so you guys will hear a lot more from me. I'm sorry that I followed underneath a textbook, but I knew that was going to happen. No, knowing me, I'm a conscientious student, so I appreciate you guys. I appreciate my team sticking around, and I definitely appreciate my family and definitely appreciate Mel sticking around while we go through this journey together. But we will make it. I know we will. And you guys will probably see me at New York Fashion Week, and um, we'll see what happens. That sounds terrific, and thank you so much for being so candid with these questions that I've asked you. And like well, I said, you're welcome, your things are yeah. ahead of you because you're, you've opened up some new doors for yourself. So I wish you all the best, my friend, well, with you thank all. Thank you, right. and you guys will hear this episode later today. It's Thursday, so my episode is coming out on Thursday. I have a bunch of men in the can that I need to put up so you guys We'll hear all my episodes on today, which is Thursday, including this one. So please give me feedback or give Mel feedback on this episode. And please, please, please share this episode out to make the community of butterflies of wisdom bigger and better and stronger. Because butterflies are strong, and I'll leave it at that. And I. We appreciate you guys, and we'll be back next week. Mel and I, I will be back more next week when I have a better grasp of what's going on. But I will keep you guys steadily updated. Bye, you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Take care.